Hello, welcome to episode 67 in the Datapack tutorial series for version 1.21. We're going to be making a structure locator, hence the reason we are not in our normal place in the lab. We are out and about in, um, well, my copy of Copycraft, actually, but that's beside the point. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to locate the nearest structure of a type. I'm going to pick Ancient City, and we're just going to have it show the coordinates every 10 seconds in or on the action bar. Okay, so let's pop over to VS Code and let's get ourselves some folders and files. So inside function, I'll create a new folder for my functions. I'll just call it locator, I think I'll do. And in there, I'll have a new file, which we'll call loop every 10 seconds dot mc function. Copy that, there we go, and we'll have a new file called nearest. Um, we're going to want a loot table, so in my namespace this time, new folder, loot table, and inside there we'll have a new file, which we'll call, I'm doing ancient city, so I'll say ancient city JSON, and we're also inside my namespace, we want some the tags folder and inside tags we're going to have another folder called world gen and inside world gen we're going to have another folder called structure and inside structure we'll have a file and I'll call it ancient city again okay right Let's make a start. What should we start with? Let's start with this world gen structure. This is going to be the thing we're looking for. So I think we'll just write it ourselves. Open and close some curlies. We'll have some values. Values is going to be a list. And in there, we're going to have one value. And I am going to say ancient Minecraft ancient city. There it is. Save. Okay. That's what we're looking for. Right. Now let's make the loot table. I think we'll pop over to Missode to make the loot table. So here we are in Missode with the loot table. Um, we will have a pool, which will have one roll, and it'll have some entries. Entries is going to be a Minecraft item. Name is going to be, it'll be a map. Map, and we'll have some functions. Functions, exploration map. It'll have a destination. Destination is going to be, it's, I'll just put a placeholder, blah, 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 just some random letters, because it's the uh, the file we just made. We'll link that in a minute. Decoration, uh, we'll pick blue marker. I'm not 100% sure what that does. Search radius, let's look within 32. And skip existing chunks, we're going to say false. And I'm going to copy all of that. And I'm going to take it back to VS Code. And I'm going to go to my loop table, ancient city, and put that in there. Now the destination, which we just put random letters in, should be tags world then structure ancient city. But if I just start to put this in, it will find it. It's already looking in tags world gen structure. Okay. So we now have a loot table that is gonna give a map looking for an ancient city. Let's get rid of those, get rid of that. Let's do load. Right, in here, I am gonna summon an item display with a specific UUID. So let's let's do, I'll tell you what, I'll write the command and then we'll put the UUID in in a bit. We will execute unless there is an entity with, uh, I'll just put a little placeholder there, with UUID run summon an item display at the coordinates where the pack is running, open and close, UUID, open and close square brackets. Right, I need something to go in here for this UUID and I need something to go in here. So I will use this UUID converter. Uh, I literally just put um, you know, Minecraft random UUID generator into, to Minecraft, into Google and this came up. So I want this hexadecimal one. I'm going to get that one. Copy that. And that one is going to go here at the beginning. 
yoink. And then I want this one in square brackets. And that is going to be this one here, this UUID here. And I'm going to copy the data, copy data. And I'm just going to, I'm going to select those two brackets there and paste. Okay, so summon, well, unless an entity with this UUID already exists, then summon an entity with that UUID, although the UUID is in a different format. Now, let's start that looping function. Function, loop every 10 seconds. Okay, get rid of load. Loop every 10 seconds. First thing we're going to do is call this function so it runs again in 10 seconds. So we will schedule function this function uh, in 10 seconds time. Okay, so this is going to run every 10 seconds now. And then what we'll do is we'll execute as the player. So execute as, as all players at that player. If I'm going to say, I'm going to say, because we're looking for the ancient city, I'm going to do a dimension check because there's no point looking for ancient cities if they're in the end or the nether because those things don't exist in the end or the nether. So if dimension overworld, Minecraft overworld, then run function nearest. Let's save that. Okay, so if you were looking for something that was in the nether, obviously you would want this to say nether. If you're looking for something in the end, you'd want this to say end. Um, so let's loop every 10 seconds done. Let's get rid of that. And let's do nearest. So we're going to use our loop table to replace the contents of the item display. So for that, I will need its UUID again, actually. So let's go back to load and let's get this UUID copy. Let us loot replace. Um, it will be an entity and it will be that UUID. Much better than searching for it. We know exactly what it is. And we're going to change its contents. And the contents we're going to get from loot and our loot table, which we just made, loot ancient city. Okay. Then we're going to get some data now from the item display and copy it into storage. Data modify storage. Um, let's just use ID data like we normally do. ID data. Uh, we'll call it ancient city because that's what we're looking for. Ancient city will set from entity and we can use that UUID again and we'll set it from the item and in the item we want the components and in the components there is something called Minecraft map decoration it's got an S yeah and it's got a funny name it's just called plus a bit odd but there we go and now let's display that data title let's display the data a bit differently we'll use the translate thing so i don't think we've used that before um so we might as well learn something new as well okay open and close open and close translate and I'm going to have some text here. I'm going to say ancient city. And then we'll have x equals percent s. And z equals percent s. Now, kind of useless at the moment because what is s? What is percent s? What is percent s? Well, we'll define them now. This just makes it a little bit easier to read here. I find as well. Let's let's define those. So we'll say with and we'll have a list. Now the first thing in my list is going to be the first percent s, so it'll be that one. And the second thing in my list will be the second percent s. So if I just did A B, this will be x equals A, z equals B. Let's test it because we've basically finished. So let's test that. Let's pop back. Let's do a reload. No, oh, we're definitely on Copycraft. There's my uh, Copycraft data packs are loaded as well. Now I saw it flash up. 
city A, B. There we go. Cool. So it's doing that. Let's go back and change this. So what we actually want to be using is some data storage as well. Let's check our data storage. Let's check the item first. Um, data get from an entity. Do I still have the UUID saved? Yeah. So we can see here at the top, we've got item components, Minecraft map decorations plus, and we've got an X and a Z. And then we've got a type and we've got a rotation. That's it. It doesn't tell us what the place is. And that'd be important when we have a, a look at something later. So it's still the X and the Z that we want. So we're taking them out. So if we look in data, get from storage, ID data. Here we have ancient city X and Z. So we've got storage ancient ID data NBT ancient city dot X and storage ID data ancient city dot Z. Let's fill those in. We'll do one. One. So it's going to be from storage. Which storage? And what's the path? Storage ID data NBT ancient city dot X, and then I'm going to copy all of that. Copy so that's the first in the list that will be going in there, and let's make another one ancient city dot Z. This is the second in the list, so it will be going in there. Save, let's go back. Let's do a reload. Reload. Ancient city X Z. There we go. We've got our information is being poked up every 10 seconds onto the action bar and it's locating the nearest ancient city to us. OK, so what, what things can you look for? So that's working. Job done. But what can we look for now? If we go to our tags, world gen structure, ancient city, if I remove that and I just do Minecraft colon, here we go. Here's a list of things we can look for. So we could get the coordinates of any of those. Obviously, as I said, if you're going to look for a fortress, um, you want to be looking in the nether. Remember, we said only if it works in the overworld. Same for Bastion Remnant. Any that are only for the end? Is there an end city in there? End city? Yeah, so that's only the end. Now, what you could do is you could look for the ancient city and something else. Uh, so I'm going to look for the ancient city and a uh, ruined portal. Okay, now what it's going to do is it's going to find whichever is closest. I've done a little bit of checking. So what I should say is what it seems to be doing is finding whichever is closest and displaying those coordinates. Now, in our nearest is saying ancient city. So you'd probably want uh, maybe nearest structure instead of ancient city because as i showed you before when we looked at that data let's look at that data again we only have an x and z coordinates it is not telling us what has those coordinates so when we're searching for two things here it is going to find one of them and it's going to get the x and the z of it and it's going to put it into the map but it's not going to tell us which one it found. <laughs> so maybe you could use that. It might be useful for you. Um, but you could also you could also just have it have it all separate as well. So this this file is only looking for an ancient city, and you could say ancient city, and then we could create new files as well for each different structure we wanted to find. Anyway, it's a nice change to be out in the field. I'll see you soon. Take care and bye-bye. Uh, I should say also thank you very much to Gal Sergi because I did get this from the Gal Sergi Data Pack Assembler. Link in the description. Just a quick little uh, short one that I stole so I can get on with some, uh, some work. Phew, naughty. See you soon. Bye-bye.